talking to Russian sources. Right. Well, they um, have said a couple of things. One, this is a very big incursion, a very big incursion, and the Ministry of Defense of Russia was not prepared for it. Mm. So the Ukrainians were able to come in and seize a, um, a chunk of land. Uh, but the the Russians were able to respond to blunt the attack, and now they've um, basically halted it, and they're they're containing it. Um, have they reduce, surrounded it? No, because the Ukrainians still have um, uh, in the border with the Sumy regions. The Ukrainians still have some lines of communication, but these lines of communication are susceptible to interdiction. So the uh, Russians are hitting them with artillery, hitting them with uh, air power, uh, hitting them with drones, and it's become almost impossible for the Ukrainians to uh, supply or resupply the forces that are that are in. And so what's happening is they're running out of ammunition, they're running out of uh, fuel, um, and they're just slowly being ground down. The the uh, there's only one outcome, and that's going to be every Ukrainian in Russia is either going to die in, in curse. Scott missiles cover the sky, and the world holds its breath. F-16 hit. Rumors swirl as Russia unleashes a barrage as a barrage of missile strikes across Ukraine, leaving devastation in its wake. Two days ago, the scale of Russia's offensive became clear as reports poured in from nearly every province in Ukraine. Yesterday morning, Russia struck again this time with a more targeted approach, hitting key positions along the front lines. From Mikolaev to Krivyarech, Vinitsia, Kamaliski, Ternopil, and beyond Russian forces delivered a powerful message Ukraine's defenses are crumbling under the relentless pressure. And as the dust settles on one wave of attacks, another is already in motion. Yesterday afternoon, Ukraine's officials boasted about intercepting 60 to 70% of Russian missiles and UAVs. But what they didn't emphasize is the sheer scale and precision of the attacks that slipped through. A foreign military camp in Krivia Ray Ray was hit. Hard ambulances swarmed the area, a grim reminder of the realities of war. The Kinzhal missile strike in Kamelnitsky wasn't just another attack, it was a direct hit on a hotel rumored to be housing F-16 pilots, a clear signal from Moscow that no one is safe. And what about the F-16 infrastructure? Russia is systematically dismantling Ukraine's hopes of utilizing these advanced aircraft. Critical facilities and supply lines are being destroyed piece by piece as Russian forces execute a well-coordinated strategy designed to cripple Ukraine's military capabilities before they can even take flight. Meanwhile, in Kyiv, we're left guessing what Russia's true targets are as the capital and surrounding regions brace for impact. The energy infrastructure so vital to Ukraine's war effort is in the crosshairs. Every strike weakens Ukraine's ability to sustain its defense, and as the winter months approach, the situation grows increasingly dire. But the military strikes are just one aspect of Russia's multifaceted strategy. As Russia's offensive rages on, the West finds itself on the back foot. Desperation seeps through as Western nations call for an emergency and Security Council meeting. But what exactly are they hoping to achieve? Are they truly concerned about the situation in Kursk? Or is it the crippling attacks on Ukraine's critical infrastructure that has them panicking? Gas facilities in ivano frankivsk Kyiv, and Lviv, Ukraine's lifelines have been severely damaged. Lviv, in particular the West's largest gas reserve, has taken a devastating hit, leaving European leaders fuming and scrambling for solutions. And then there's the matter of Russian UAVs allegedly entering Polish airspace, penetrating 15 kilometers deep before being brought down. Poland blames bad weather for its failure to intercept the drone, what a convenient excuse. But let's be clear, this is more than just a weather mishap. It's a stark reminder of the West's vulnerability in the face of Russia's growing technological prowess. And as tensions rise, we are likely to see more of these incidents, each one pushing us closer to a broader conflict. Yet, as the West struggles to respond, the situation on the ground in Ukraine takes another dramatic turn. Desperation is driving Ukraine to take increasingly risky actions. In a bold yet ultimately futile move, Ukrainian forces cross the border at Nethodivka, aiming directly at Belgorod. This isn't the first time Ukraine has attempted such an audacious strike. Historically, these efforts have been more about making headlines than achieving any real military success. And this time is no different. The Russian response was swift and decisive. Ukrainian forces were quickly repelled, their troops scattered, retreating into the forests or back across the border. Reports from the ground suggest that the Ukrainian attack was more of a symbolic gesture than a serious military effort. Local residents near Belgorod reported no significant engagements further fueling speculation that this was merely a diversionary tactic designed to sow confusion and panic among Russian forces. But if Ukraine's goal was to create chaos, it has failed miserably. 
Russia's military is too disciplined, too experienced to be swayed by such amateurish ploys. And let's not forget, Belgorod isn't just another city, it's a key strategic location for Russia, serving as a vital supply hub for its operations in Ukraine. Any attempt to destabilize this region would require a massive, well-coordinated effort, something Ukraine is simply not capable of at this stage of the conflict. Their attempt to breach Belgorod's defenses is not only reckless, but also reveals their increasing desperation as Russian forces tighten their grip. As the battle lines shift, Russia prepares to deliver a crushing blow on another front. Russia isn't just reacting, it's anticipating striking where it hurts the most. In Kharkiv and Sumy, Russian forces launched a series of precision strikes targeting Ukrainian high-res artillery positions. The destruction was absolute one system obliterated, along with its 15-man crew. But Russia didn't stop there. Temporary Ukrainian military deployments, hastily assembled to shore up their defenses, were also targeted. These strikes weren't just about inflicting casualties, they were about sending a message Russia knows where Ukraine is vulnerable, and it will exploit those weaknesses mercilessly. And what's more, these counterattacks are part of a broader Russian strategy to encircle and isolate Ukrainian forces. The goal is clear, cut off supply lines, disrupt communications, and force Ukraine into a defensive posture that will ultimately lead to their collapse. This isn't just about territory, it's about breaking Ukraine's will to fight. Each strike, each engagement, is carefully calculated to maximize pressure on Ukrainian forces, forcing them into positions where they can be systematically dismantled. But as the battlefield dynamics evolve, the war's reach extends far beyond the front lines. While the battles rage on the ground, a shadow war is unfolding one that involves espionage, intelligence, and a high-stakes game of cat and mouse. Russia has accused Ukraine, with full backing from the West, of preparing chemical weapons attacks. The evidence is there, plain as day, but predictably, the West turns a blind eye. Ukraine is clearly resorting to more extreme measures as it becomes increasingly clear that conventional warfare is not in their favor. This is the nature of the beast. When you're losing on the battlefield, you turn to more desperate and dangerous tactics. And then there's the IEA, supposedly a neutral body. Yet their actions have raised more than a few eyebrows. Their presence in Russian controlled territories, particularly at the Zaporizhia nuclear plant, seems more about gathering intelligence for Ukraine than ensuring nuclear safety. Last year, Russia exposed a scandal when a member of the IEA was caught photographing Russian defensive positions inside the plant. Not long after, Ukrainian forces attempted a daring but ultimately failed raid across the river. Coincidence? Hardly. This isn't just about a single incident, it's indicative of a larger pattern. The West, under the guise of international oversight, is actively gathering intelligence to aid Ukraine's war efforts. But Russia isn't naive. They've adapted, turning these inspections into opportunities to feed misinformation back to the West, playing a long and clever game of deception. This is a war fought on multiple fronts, and in this arena, Russia has shown itself to be a master strategist. And as the global chessboard shifts, the stakes in this geopolitical struggle rise ever higher. The world is witnessing a new kind of warfare one where battles are fought not just with guns and missiles, but with intelligence and influence. The US, ever the meddler in global affairs, finds itself increasingly frustrated as its plans unravel. After a string of failed color revolutions and waning influence, they now set their sights on Georgia. But Russia, ever vigilant, has been two steps ahead. Through their vast intelligence networks, they've provided crucial support to allies like Serbia and Georgia, thwarting Western backed coups before they can even begin to take root. This is a quiet war, a war of shadows, fought in the back rooms and dark alleys of global politics. It's a war where the stakes are no less than the sovereignty of nations, where the US deploys its vast resources to destabilize governments, and Russia fights to keep its allies safe from Western manipulation. This isn't just about Georgia, it's about a global struggle for power and influence where every move counts and every misstep could lead to disaster. And now, as Georgia prepares for its October 26th parliamentary elections, the world watches with bated breath. Will the US succeed in igniting another color revolution, or will Russia's counterintelligence efforts keep the peace? The stakes couldn't be higher, and the outcome will reverberate across the globe. This is the new Cold War, where intelligence and counterintelligence are the weapons of choice, and where the fate of nations hangs in the balance. The situation in Ukraine is spiraling into a new and dangerous phase, one marked by intensified Russian strikes, increasingly desperate Ukrainian counterattacks, 
and a global intelligence war that could reshape the balance of power. As the West scrambles to respond, Russia remains resolute, striking where it hurts most and defending its interests with unwavering determination. This isn't just about Ukraine, it's about the future of global power dynamics. And as this conflict continues to evolve, one thing is certain the world is on the brink of a major shift, one that will have far-reaching consequences for us all.